Welcome back to Pete Meets. I'm thrilled to be back at Apex Electronics once again. On my last visit, I found a treasure trove of electronic history. The video went viral, and it sparked a wave of nostalgia from engineers around the world. Today, we're not just revisiting Apex, we're doing a deeper dive. Our special guest today is Dave Jennings. He's a four-time Emmy Award-winning broadcast engineer that's been involved in four different Olympic broadcasts. All this analog equipment is something that he used firsthand back in the day, and he wants to share his knowledge with you. Dave will be showing us around and pointing out state-of-the-art analog broadcasting equipment from the 70s and 80s. It's hard to imagine, but this video gear that I'm using to shoot this video was well under $5,000. And back then, it would have cost over a million. This switch is pretty cool. I wonder what else it does. Dave. Hi. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Fine. Yeah. I got, into, I got into broadcasting in high school in radio. I uh, went to my local radio station and they said, well, to work here you have to have an FCC license. So I took a correspondence course in the summer, got my <laughs> first class FCC license and went back and they said, well, we have to hire you now. We don't have that many first class licensed people. So that's how I got into broadcast. Here's a piece of video gear. It's a beta cam. Beta cam. Beta cam. Oh, oh there's yeah. More. There's more. I got to pull this down. There's a bunch more in another aisle here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> beta cam SP. That's professional. Yeah, because yeah. look at all the meters on it. Yeah, meters. Yeah. XLR mm -hmm. connectors. Look at this camera connector. Yeah. That's definitely proprietary. Mm hmm. Yeah, you had to use a Sony camera with it, probably. So this would go with a. Uh, like a field kit, mm -hmm. I guess. And we've seen them walk with that in one hand and the camera yeah, on they, their Yeah, or they put the, the recorder on their back or something. Nothing like what you use today, which weighs <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and does 4K. But as old as it is, and look at this, the bottom's off on it. There's something to be said for the quality of the design mm -hmm. and engineering that went into this. Mm -hmm. It is I, complex, isn't it? It's amazing. I mean, just by looking at this board. Are those all, look, are these all different hand-tuned potentiometers? Where do you see right? them? All Probably these, these here? Yeah, there's so many. Yes, I many. think so. I think you're right, yeah. Is that for some kind of calibration? Uh, that's for, they have to, uh, during factory alignment, I guess they have to. Oh boy. Have to align everything with those. It says modulator, demodulator. It's labeling actually what these sections yeah. of the, uh, the board do. And these were remarkably stable compared to the previous generations of tape recorder, of video tape recorders, and so on. But yeah, there's a lot of variables in there. And it, you know, it's very well constructed. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the chassis, cool. this, you know, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. It's definitely rugged, as it should be. Mm. Oh, here's a here's a digital videotape machine. Oh, D2. D2. I remember that so format. So that would be like what seventy, eighty thousand dollars worth of equipment. Or Maybe 50, I don't know. It's called D2, the composite digital format invented by Ampex. So with D2, we were able to position everything on one tape, make a digital dub of that tape to create our B-roll, and then we were free to dissolve and edit and insert anything we wanted in any order without losing any quality. CBS made that their standard. And what were the specs on this? Uh, what's well, the resolution? Uh, same as regular old TV. NTSC. NTSC. It wasn't any better. But digital. But digital, yeah. Uh, so you could do multiple generations of uh, editing and recording with, no signal with loss. less signal loss, yeah. But it wasn't a very ideal format uh, until they got to component. So this and is where the tape went. So imagine putting in a, a very large tape. A it, records, it records a what we would consider very low resolution mm -hmm. NTSC signal. Up here we have Betacam SP recorders. <laughs> Remember those? Oh, man. And here's DV cam, which was kind of a consumer standard, but this looks I like... I remember DV cam. Yeah, this is a professional version of it. Yeah. And this looks like, oh, some Panasonic professional VHS. Professional VHS? Yeah. Well, it just means it, it's a recorder with uh, more features for pro, that pros need, like I was saying, editing control, remote control. And these are all editing controllers here for videotape editing. Mostly probably done with uh, Betamax, Betacam, even uh, 
VHS. Look um, at this. Convergence, that was a famous one. Paltex, I don't remember as famous. And these are Sony's, I think. This is, so this cool. is a video switcher by Ross, I think. So this is a video switcher where you would select what goes on the air here. And you could do the wipes and the, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the, the effects with and it. And this is how you'd yeah. change, uh, mm -hmm. activate the effect? Yes. Uh -huh. And it would blend it? And that's just the control panel. I like this control. It has a cool feel They're always it. smooth, yeah. This is, a, this is a tiny switcher compared to the, uh, you know, the regular ones in a large studio. Yeah. More of this stuff down here. More oh, my gosh. Oh, this, yeah. Well, these are the bigger ones now. These are Grass Valley. These are the control panels for the mid-level. The heart of the 300 series is Grass Valley Group's exclusive effects memory system, EMEM. The most powerful memory system in a production switcher is a standard feature. But this has more, uh, more banks that you can create effects on. Mix effects transitions can be cuts, mixes, non-additive mixes, or wipes. All by manual control via fader bar. But you know how this thing works. Not a lot of people, mm -hmm. I think, coming in here. Look at this pattern selector. Mm -hmm. So these are your choices of effects. I guess that's where it start, starts and stops. It's like A, B. Uh, could be, I don't know. So you'd have to say, okay, well, I want the transition to do something with an mm -hmm. iris. I don't even know. It looks I like think it's, it's two different choices, and I don't know how you select them. Oh, outer, inner. Oh, okay. Outer pattern, inner okay. pattern. Mm -hmm. So you're like, I want a certain special effect. You dial it in over here. You can select a different wipe pattern on each mix effects system. With personality programming, you can create wipes from hundreds of possibilities. Electronic still store is ESS. So that would be stills. So you would store a still from a video, yeah. a video capture still, and you mm -hmm. would hold that into memory. Mm -hmm. And this is probably the Quantel. And that, is, that was a manufacturer who was the... Uh, leader in video effects like we've been talking about all the squeezing and tumbling and so on and it could even be a uh, graphics generator as well and a quantel key which is just another part of it font a and b that would be character generators whatever you would select on this row would be what you're going to put up mm -hmm. next you'd see it on a monitor mm -hmm. over here it's the preset and once you do this then it transfers this to this bus which is what's on air what's online or you could switch it and you could also bring in these ME buses MLEs which are uh, mix effects buses and that's where you would add these wipes and the various patterns and other titles and things like that so is this a creative person using this because they're no not direct really it's a technician usually but there's a director who is telling him what he wants next and where and uh, you know uh, what effect to put over it. So, so the director's calling the show. Yeah. The technician is manning this console. Yeah. He has plenty to do. Not he doesn't have time to think about <laughs> what it is I want to do. He just uh, he has to uh, you know execute what they want. Control panels now are way more complex than these are. What is Cayenne? An automobile? A seasoning? No. This is Cayenne, the video production center. The control panel is incredibly thin, as well as the touchscreen menu, which supports five soft knobs and four USB connectors. I don't know if it's just me, but I've always been fascinated by things with lots of buttons on them. Yeah. Oh, I love these switchers, yeah. Like, as a kid, mm -hmm. and as an, maybe as an adult, maybe I'm a man-child, mm -hmm. but whenever I see this, I'm just drawn to it. Yeah. Like, I uh, think that's... Uh, that's... 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 Yes, for, the, for the production switchers. <laughs> That's pretty neat. Just... Stay tuned for part 84 yeah. of Production Switchers. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun walking down memory aisle with you and explaining what I knew about this stuff. It's a great thing. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Even the most carefully engineered electrical equipment may need service on occasion. That's why the Grass Valley Group maintains strategically located worldwide service support. Full documentation, computer diagnostic systems, operator and maintenance training classes are backed up with customer service representatives to assure your continued satisfaction. 
There are many other features we could mention, but perhaps the most important feature is the pride we put into every switcher. 